Thanks everyone for coming today and um, to listen to uh, Catchment Health. Um, great, great to see the turnout. So, um, my name's Stuart Hood. I'm the Natural Resources Officer at Rouse County Council. Um, and I work primarily with planning and um, project delivery in, in our catchment areas, our water catchment zones, um, working to improve water quality in our bulk water um, treatment system. So, yeah, I was going to touch on three things today. Um, firstly, the overall Richmond River health um, and why it's important that we look after that. Also, um, what Rouse has been doing in the recent past around our catchments and catchment health and also what can landholders do to, to assist the Richmond in general. So, I'll start off, everyone may have heard around um, restoring the Richmond and the need for that. So, there's a bit of science behind, behind that push. Um, as a touchstone, we often go back to the EcoHealth study, which was done back in 2014. Um, so that was uh, a, year, a year's worth of work that was done by UNE. Um, it was looking at um, a number of different areas and catchments up the east coast um, and assessing four parameters. Basically, it was the water quality, uh, riparian condition, uh, sedimentation, and the macroinvertebrates, uh, and riparian, riparian conditions. So, we found that a really useful process because we could, we could judge the Richmond versus other areas. And unfortunately for our area, the Richmond came back as actually the worst performing uh, catchment for quality. And um, so if we're going to show, we had a D plus as our overall score, which was uh, not great, not great. Um, but we do see a, there's a large variation across the Richmond in general. So we've got uh, good water quality coming out of our forested zones, say where Rocky Creek Dam is, um, and coming out of the upper uh, Kyogle catchments. But it very quickly degrades as we come into the mid Richmond, mid Richmond area, um, which is where we all realise that the that the Wilsons and Richmond are quite muddy, um, and that's kind of what what this is telling us is that that's where we're seeing a lot of the water quality issues um, that linger on for a long time throughout the period of a year. Um, but then we do see some improvement as the Richmond River turns and it comes out and exits at Ballina because we have that tidal flushing which occurs um, to dilute some of these uh, pollutants over time. Um, which brings me into our uh, contribution to Richmond River health uh, it's of our interest to improve water quality um, in particular because we draw water from just upstream of Lismore which was actually in an area which is graded about an F quality in general water. Um, that's the Wilson source. So that's from agriculture? It's from agriculture. Um, it's also a function of, the, of Richmond itself. Um, we call it, it's a hydraulically challenged system. So it takes a long time to flush these nutrients out once it's actually in that zone. Um, so I'll just touch on a, on a few things that Rouse has been, been doing in the past. So this one here is indicative of our uh, river reach planning. Thanks Andy, thanks for your assistance. So this is our river reach that we've been working on since 2011. Um, we've, we've basically worked on every, most properties between Lismore and the Boat Harbour Nature Reserve. So that's with bush regeneration works um, and some uh, riverbank stabilisation, uh, working with farmers where they want to do off-stream water points and um, changing of fencing off riverbanks and this kind of thing. Um, so since 2011, that's been, that's been a focus of Rouse and um, the, the colour codings on here are telling us our management condition. So for us, we're trying to get everything in a green which tells us that it's, it's a less uh, weed control effort required. And at that point, we like to um, try and get landowners to take over that ongoing weed control effort. Um, and, and this is a bit of an older map, but we are actually at that point with this reach where we think that, um, yeah, the weed control requirements is quite low. 
Um, so thank you, Andy. Oh, we also have done a similar one with Emigrant Creek. So we have the Emigrant Creek, Emigrant Creek Dam here. Um, this is this is quite a different catchment in, in which it's predominantly macadamia farms, so we have a few different issues to deal with. Um, we find there's a bit more of a diffuse uh, pollution, not pollution, but sedimentation which can occur. So we're also looking at um, working with local land services here in improving um, or helping some farmers to improve practices through this reach. Um, so we've now, so that's a, a river reach plan that's been going since 2017 and we've just started our next sections of river reach in Emigrant and Wilsons. I can quickly show those ones. So that's our next section on the Wilsons. We're now asking for landowners to contact us anyone between Boat Harbour Nature Reserve and Elton Village because um, that's that's of interest to us. Um, it's again back here in our most difficult water quality section. Um, so this is going to be a, a focus for us for the next couple of years and similarly with Emigrant Creek. Sorry to juggle you around Andy. This one is looking at the next section of catchment upstream of the Pacific Highway and out towards the um, top of Nuribar. So hopefully that's showing some indication of our priorities at, at Rouse at the moment. Um, for, for landowners, uh, yeah, basically we can't we can't restore the Richmond ourselves as agencies. It's going to require a whole of community um, assistance, and that's why we came out with uh, this landowners guide a few years ago with the help of local land services and Richmond Land Care, and it just goes through the different strategies that people can do with with their riparian zones, um, different uh, weed control potentials, different fencing options that people have. Um, because yeah, it's basically, it's not, we're not out of a production versus environment situation. Um, a lot of things that we're doing in these catchments, um, you know, they're keeping sediment on farms, they're keeping nutrients on farms, keeping them out of the waterways. So it's really a um, yeah, win-win situation when we can get to that point. Um, so yeah, I would, if, if people are interested in doing um, works to, to assist our waterways, contact your different councils and local land services and contact Rouse um, and we can uh, try and assist you. And I recommend taking our, taking our book as well. We would love to do more of that. If it is in these particular catchment areas, then Rouse is, is keen to do to that kind of thing. Yeah, but as I said, the Richmond is a it's a huge beast. Yeah. So if you're talking about Bunga Walburn, that's the kind of there, yeah, that's Richmond Valley. Best to contact them first, yeah. Is there any other questions? Yeah. There was talk of doing a report card a couple of years ago, but it was so not the state government do that report card. No, no, it, it's it's come out of University of New England. Okay. Um, but because it's been of such interest to the Richmond, there's a lot of support for doing that assessment again. Yeah. Um, and I think around the ten year time would be quite well supported. So yeah, we're not wouldn't be far off doing that assessment again. So you were talking about the, um, the reach planning, is it still the best practice to keep stock out of the edge of the bank? It certainly is, yes. Yeah, so there's a number, number of reasons you want to be doing that, you know, for your stock health um, and, and also, you know, people lose cattle in floods and on eroding riverbanks. So it's, um, you know, you can, you can buy an electric fence unit for a couple of hundred dollars and string up some electric wire and, um, and move the cattle around. So it's, if people are keen to do it, it's something we always would encourage. Now, of course, there is potential weed 
issue when you when you restrict cattle out of waterways. But um, yeah, these things these things can be can be managed. So yeah, that's definitely yeah. Cattle out of water, waterways is one of our main things. So you worked a lot. Oh, sorry. Okay. I was just going to say you worked a lot with macadamias. Yeah. What, what's been the most successful uh, project you've done with the macadamia farms along riparian areas? Uh, well, there's not one that really stands out. Um, I guess, especially through Emigrant Creek catchment, we're trying to cover not just Emigrant no, Creek itself, the, but also the feeder the streams. So we, we, you know, we plant lamandra beds to try and filter as much. It's really about capturing sediment in that situation. Yeah. But yeah, we do see a, a variation in, in management processes, and, and yeah, you can see the see the differences in, in sediment and that kind of thing. Any other questions? Hey, cool. Yeah. 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 So you're talking uh, lower emigrant creek? Yeah. yeah. That's not because that's that's below Emigrant Creek Dam, it hasn't been a huge focus of, of Rouse. Yeah, but there is a big effort on there at the moment with local land services and, and Ballina Council. Um, I would imagine that like any landowner, they could they could tailor a, a site plan depending on what they're most interested in doing. It doesn't have to be the the whole hog. 50 metre re-veg project. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Any other Thank questions? You. Thanks, guys.